and welcome to Up and Out. I'm your host, LaPortia. We have the digital director of The Advocate, the one and only Alex Cooper. What's up, Alex? Nothing much, LaPortia. How are you doing? Listen, Alex sounds like he has the holiday hangover just like the rest of us, okay? I'm pretty sure I'm right here. <laughs> Listen, I know you covered the one-year anniversary of the Club Q shooting last week. So many families lost loved ones in that tragic, tragic incident. And we know that we feel lost all of the time. But for most, it really hits, especially hard over the holidays. And, you know, it's been a year since the shooting at the LGBTQIA nightclub, Club Q in Colorado Springs. How did the community choose to remember the anniversary of this tragedy, Alex? Yeah, so like you said, I was in Colorado Springs last week um, to remember um, the one-year anniversary that happened um, last year, November 19th. Um, I was in town. I attended several memorials um, throughout the weekend um, in several locations across the city um, from, you know, local inclusive clubs and bars to um, the actual side of Club Q. Um, and there, so there was a host of different types of memorials and events remembering the five um, people who died, uh, Daniel Aston, yeah. Raymond Vance Green, Kelly Loving, Derek Romp, and Ashley Puck. Um, so, yeah, so there was, you know, it was a weekend of, of remembrance and also celebrating their lives, but also remembering the tragedy. Yeah. So what what are the current plans for Club Q? I mean, I haven't seen anybody in the mainstream media really talk about that outside of us. Yeah. So the current plans for Club Q and what's going to happen is essentially the current owners of Club Q of the site, um, they're going to open uh, a lo- another location um, in the city that's described as like a more quieter venue. Um, another gather, gathering place for LGBTQ plus people in Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs doesn't really have a lot of um, queer friendly spaces um, or at least spaces devoted to queer folks. Um, there are some like inclusive spaces and friendly places, but not, you know, just, you know, designed for queer people to come out and to celebrate and, you know, um, have a drink and relax. Um, the owners are also organizing um to have the current site, so where the shooting did happen, to have that renovated and made into another location um, and have Club Q reopen in that spot. There also are plans to have a memorial in front of the site, so in front of the club. Um, there's going to be a flagpole um, and some benches um, that were that were described um, as part of the memorial. Okay. So... You know, uh, we definitely send our thoughts to the family who lo- families who lost their loved ones. But what about the survivors? How are they dealing with the impacts and the after effects of the violence that they witnessed that night? Yeah, I mean, the survivors are really holding on to each other. Um, I spoke to several of them throughout the weekend, and many of them, you know, cling to other survivors of you know people who have the same experience that they did, people who know. Um, what it feels like to go through this tragedy and not only experience what happened, the shooting, but also what happened afterwards, the, you know, the media attention, the politics behind it. There's also, you know, um, disagreements on what Club Q should be, the memorial process. Um, So the survivors are really just grappling with all this um, and really just, you know, seeking help in ways that they can. Um, There's still medical costs that they're working to pay for. Um, So they're still struggling. Um, But again, like I said, a lot of them have come together as a family where they know each other, they hang out with each other, they rely on each other. You know, I really do think that something has to be done about gun control in this country. You know, Mm -hmm. I I think that something needs to be done about it and needs to be done about it soon, you know. I have one just question I just thought of specifically for you. What is one thing that you learned or what was your big take away from being there last week? Yeah, um, I think it's the resiliency within communities because that's really the driver here is that the community came together um, and there was one survivor I was speaking to and they essentially said, you know, it's it, it was heartening for them to see the community support them even if it had to be this way, um, it still, it helps, it helps process what happened when you have those people who you can rely on 
strangers before, but friends now. Oh, I like that. I like that. Okay. We love to see Alice Cooper on his, you know, correspondent reporter work, especially things that we know that we're all very passionate about here at Equal Pride that, you know, because like I said, we're one of the only people covering this. So thank you so much for keeping us informed on all of that. Now, Alex, one of my favorite parts of the year is when Miriam Webster releases their words of the year. And this year, the words of the year are fill it in. Yeah, so the word of the year is authentic. Um, it is it is the word of the year. It has been around from celebrity circles to Taylor Swift to AI, you know, even going along with Elon Musk and describing what he wanted X to be. Um, okay. It's it's been literally everywhere, like literally in every corner of the world. Marion Rapture has found that authentic has essentially been discussed, um, used, looked up. And part of what I think is hilarious is that the word has so many different types of meanings that that's also why it's being looked up because I mean people don't really understand the context that's being used in. And one of those being, of course, is you know, true to your own personality, your own character, um, your own spirit, um, which I think is resonating a lot with people this year. Okay, you know, I personally love that it's the word authentic this year. And I love that people have heard it in so many different ways that they're like, well, hold up, let me let me look this up. Because when you said it with um, Elon, I thought to myself, what are he over there using? How you don't buy a company and then try to say that's authentic? But I don't know. I don't know how he used it, right? And I'm like, I love the word authentic. I feel like I'm going to hate it now since more people now understand what it means. You know how we, just like we, um, they done drove a uh, narcissist into the ground. If you ask anybody, anybody you don't like, oh my gosh, he's a narcissist. Oh, shut up. You don't even know what it means. Like, you know, and so I just feel th that's why that this time of the year is one of my favorite parts of the year, because I just feel like it's a new um, way to learn about the new words that we have learned as a people. Right, you know, a person is smart. People are dumb. Uh, so, what other words got mentioned this year? I mean, yeah, there is a few other ones that have been really that have been looked up a lot. Um, you know, it went, goes from deep fake. There's dead name, um, implode. Um, unfortunately, because of that submarine accident. Okay. Uh, coronation, obviously, from the king's coronation. Um, you also have Riz, which is romantic appeal or charmed. Um, and so there's been, there's a few other ones I've been looking up. EGOT has also been a popular one this year that Merriam Webster has found to be increased in people looking it up. Um, but yeah, Authentic seems to have won out. We'll see what other, because I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what other dictionaries have this year. Okay, so I have to say this, you know, I although I do love the formal words, Alex, you know, I had to go do some research on my own to see what popular slang words were all of the rage this year. Okay, you ready? Yeah. We have sus. You know what that means? Yes, my nephew sus. actually uses that all the time. Yeah, because it says, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you know, he's a little sus. You know Why I mean? you mean sus? That car is Why sus. sus. Why are you acting like you didn't run to the boss on me? Why are you being sus? Don't be sus now, right? Salty. Now, I feel like the world is behind. You know, I, I say this and I say this proudly. We all know black people make up a lot of the words, you know, and I feel like we we started using salty years and years ago. So I don't know why that's just catching on just now. We have cap. It's cap if you think we didn't make that word up. All right. We have simp. Simp is an interesting um word because you know why are you being a sim when you really like someone you know guys typically use that when it comes to other men they're like oh you simping over her oh blah 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 definitely has a positive and negative connotation if you ask me and the only word that i've never heard used was preply now i, I don't know what that means yeah i figured that must be that must be like a rich word, you know, it must be out of the culture word, you know, so I don't really know. And they also say that three in five parents say they try to keep up with the slang, but only 2% knew every word on the list I just named. Listen, I'm happy that me and you are cool enough to know all of these different things, you know, baby, because I use it all the time. And to say I'm not cool enough with 
recap. So thank you so much, Alex, for joining me this week. I'll see you next week, okay? Ma'am, have a good one. <laughs>